UB keys have been hacked. The point of the key is that like it's like on your keychain and it's actually kind of hard to somebody's keychain out of their pocket. Does anybody know how much it costs like is for a UB key? I don't know if people know what is the process if you lose your UB key. I would have to say that this has actually happened to me this is why I know about uh, the phone number hijacking thing because it happened to me like randomly. For the average person, it's better to have that second factor than not. I do really want to stress this point, though, that no matter what second factor you use, it is always more secure than just a single factor. Oh, and if you do that, make sure it's not your cat's name. Hello, how the tech are you? This is our weekly tech show, mostly weekly tech show on Echoplex Media. We talk about tech news, science news, and what other, any other tech tech and science stuff we feel like talking about. I am historian Matt, and my co-hosts will introduce themselves for their segments. I'm just going to jump right in to my stories. I've got one story. It's an interesting one, but uh, it's uh, basically the YubiKeys have been hacked. Uh, if you don't know anything about YubiKeys, they're these little uh, hardware keys. They're, they're basically like... Uh, they, they look like USB thumb drives, but they don't actually hold any data on them that for, you know, saving, you know, they're able to save data in, on them anyways, but they're specifically for security. They're the most popular, the UB key specifically is the most popular form of this kind of like security key. Uh, it's basically a hardware token for two factor authentication. It's used on a number of sites that require a higher level of security for when you log in. So uh, you, everybody knows about getting SMS messages, text messages on your phone for a second factor. Those are, that's very insecure. Uh, there are other apps, uh, that will give you like the, the key, uh, it does something very similar to these, uh, UB keys only in app form. And those are mostly secure, but they have a little, they have some issues with this, but these hardware keys are the most secure form of this, you know, two factor authentication out there. Well, anyways, what's happened is the UB key and other keys that use some similar hardware contains a cryptographic flaw that can allow an attacker to clone the key. Basically, they're stealing the the private key and creating a new key that can do all the same thing. Uh this affects all UB keys running firmware version 5.7. There is apparently, uh, I believe there's a newer version out that um, can that doesn't have this flaw. The problem is YubiKeys, the firmware is not upgradable. So these, Ooh. if you have these older keys, you need to go and basically buy a whole new key if you want to get around this uh, issue. The, but it's not that big of a deal. It's, you know, in the news because it's the only exploit out there for YubiKeys so far, but... The only way you can actually do this exploit is if you have physical access to the key. Uh, so from the, adv the advisory that's out for this particular flaw, the attacker would need physical possession of the UB key, security key, or UBHSM. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure it's another form of the key. Uh, they would have to have knowledge of the accounts they want to target and specialized equipment to perform the necessary attack. Uh, depending on the use case, the attacker may also require additional knowledge, including username, PIN, account password, or authentication key. So there's a lot of hurdles, a lot of to, to leap over to, to get this exploit to actually work. So even with this vulnerability, security keys remain the most secure form of two-factor authentication. What do you guys think? I mean, I, 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 it's not surprising that if somebody has physical access to the key and your password and login information to the YubiKey website, they could clone the key if they were sufficiently <laughs> sophisticated. I think the point of the key is that like, it's like on your keychain, and it's actually kind of hard to somebody's keychain out of their pocket. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, yeah, it's like stealing an actual key. Yeah. Um, uh, I do want to say though, like you mentioned that uh, SMS two factor authentication is insecure which I'm not going to argue that it's it's the least secure version of two-factor authentication, but still any form of two-factor authentication is more secure than having just a password. I guess that's fair. The issue I have with the SMS, the text messaging, basically, for those who are uninitiated, and I think it's probably a little more secure now, but 
people uh there it's not the actual sms that's the problem it's uh that it's possible to basically hijack the, your phone number and if somebody does that basically jacks your phone number uh, moves your phone number from your phone to another phone that they control now they can get all your your text messages and so if you're doing two-factor and that's the only way you have two-factor authentication set up they can but if they can figure out your password, they can do the two-factor authentication. Oh, um, that's what I mean, though, is like if you're logging in with just a password, they don't even need to do that. So any two-factor is a hurdle above needing to know your password. Well, the other, I think the the next step is some websites will allow you to log in, basically if you do a little social engineering with just the uh, the text message, basically. I think that's what... Uh, some places of having a problem with that. So at you that point, that is single password. factor authentication. What? What was that? That at that point, that is single factor authentication. That is true. So I mean, but, but to the average person, right? Like you, if let's let's like let's say you're just too lazy to install the Google app Authenticator or whatever, like on your yeah. on your phone. For the average person, it's better to have that second factor than not because you're mm -hmm. for someone. So first of all, someone that's going to do that is going after you specifically Correct. and they're probably a fairly sophisticated actor and so if you're in a situation where that's a likelihood or a, like a, a possibility or likelihood like i think i am um I, I think i'm one of those people where that's a thing that someone would very likely attempt to do to me well then i should yeah. never ever use uh, uh text as a second factor but my mother right. i mean come on most people my mom's <laughs> age have their password is like the name of their cat yeah. Okay. Well, so. I, I would have to say that this has actually happened to me this is why I know about uh, the phone number hijacking thing is it happened to me like randomly. I'd heard a little bit about it beforehand, but then like one day uh, back when I was working at Google, like in the middle of the day, I realized I couldn't send text messages. Uh, but basically yeah, the phone part of my phone wasn't working, but of course, since I was on Wi-Fi cause I was at work, like everything else seemed to work fine. So I didn't catch it at first, but eventually uh, I was just lucky. I think I was tech, tried to text somebody to don't normally do not, not that often during the day and realize w what had happened. Um, it turns out they were targeting my email address and they tried to, they switched the two factor authentication from my phone. Um, I don't think I actually had two factor th authentication set up with my email that way uh, at the time. So it, it didn't really help them. Luckily uh, they were trying to get in my Google email and Google just like shut down my email. Unfortunately, I didn't have um, other methods to recover my email set up at the time. So I had to go through a whole process to get back in. So I strongly suggest if you have Gmail, make sure you have other methods of two th factor authentication set up on it. And make sure you have a recovery email stuff or a recovery method set up uh, there. That's not your phone again. But uh, it was a yeah. big issue at the time. So does anybody know how much it costs? Like, is for a YubiKey? Because They're I mean, this this expensive. story being what it is, like, who's gonna? Does anybody know? Like, is it a monthly fee? No, no, it's, it's a one-time a... fee for the YubiKey. And I'm no. over here. Uh, so what they do is they the emulate a keyboard. You plug them into a USB yeah. drive or a, a USB slot on your computer and they emulate a keyboard. And when you touch them, when you physically push on them, they register that you're touching them and they will spit out a bunch of keys into, uh, into whatever you have uh, focused. And then at the end, they'll hit the enter key. You know, they virtually hit the enter key. Uh, so a lot of times if you see just like a bunch of random characters that someone put in like uh, slack or a tweet or something, uh, it is possible that they accidentally hit their YubiKey when they had like the, the input window focused. Yeah. <laughs> it would happen a lot back at when I worked at Facebook, uh, there would be, you know, we'd be in slack and someone would put one of their uh, you know, YubiKey things in, in chat accidentally by bumping their YubiKey because we were required to have them in our laptop. And basically, if you slid your hand across the side of the laptop, they would end up spitting out one of your authentication strings. Okay, so I want to get back but, to um, sort of talking about how authentication a little bit. There's basically three ways to authenticate. It's something you know, something you have, and something you are. There are other ways, but those are the three. I'm sure there are prob there's probably other ways that people have come up with. So if you if you just do something you know, that's the weakest one. 
something you have is probably is is more is stronger than something you know, and then something you are, but uh, it probably maybe tied with something you have because if it's your finger and then somebody is stronger than you and has your finger. <laughs> And that's now something they have, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I don't know if any of them are particularly stronger than the rest. It's a lot has to do with implementation and user because, you know, you can have a good password word or you can have a very bad password, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But um, the more of those like three different methods of authentication that you have, so if you have one single factor, you're not very secure, but you're somewhat like basic stuff. It, it's probably fine. Two factor authentication is currently like the, sort of the gold standard, but of course the second factor is the, you know, how well that's implemented is, uh, really determines how strong that is. And then nobody's actually doing it that I know of, but three factor authentication is apparently the ultimate where you have one of each of those <laughs> A PayPal uh, forms of authentication. What? PayPal lets you do it. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know anybody <laughs> did it. Um, if, if you want to, you can set it up so that you have to do an authenticator in your fingerprint if you want. To. Okay. Hmm. Um, interesting. I don't use PayPal for reasons but like, completely unrelated. I do really want to stress this point, though, that no matter what second factor you use, it is always more secure than just a single factor. Like, even if it's just like uh, a text or an email or something that's like relatively, quote, easy, unquote, to hack that's still more secure than just having a password because they have to know your password and then something else. Right. You know? I know, I know that, um, not long before I moved from Campbell, um, the, I won't give out the email address. Oh, it's a public email address. Echo at echoplexmedia.com. Someone was definitely trying to get in. Okay. Um, oh. because I think they, they, they definitely, I think they got the password and, um, I just had two factor via, uh, via the uh, SMS and they were unable to get in because they didn't have my phone and that whoever it was, was not sophisticated enough to clone my phone. So all things considered, I'm glad I had the SMS. Uh, and, um, oh. but then I was, then I was like, well, maybe I should use my password manager for the authenticator. I'm like, no, now we're a single factor again, aren't we? Because if my password manager <laughs> is also the authenticator, well, if somebody gets into my password manager, they have the, they have the keys to everything. So, yeah. yep. That's why when Bitwarden offers to to use like a like a TOTP token or or a, what's it called pass keys, I'm like, no, I don't I don't want Bitwarden to be my only factor. Right. Uh, and by the way, if you're not using a password manager, you absolutely should be. They're free. Like, all of your passwords should be different for every single account that you have, and you shouldn't even know them. Yeah, ideally you should not have knowledge of them. You should only have one password in your brain, the password to your password manager. Oh, and if you do that, make sure it's not your cat's name. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Make sure, also, it's, a lot of those... make sure it's annoying to type it in. <laughs> yep. Also, a lot of those password managers support two-factor authentication, including using these UB keys. Uh, yep. Also, because um, you asked earlier, I did look up how much it costs uh, the cheapest YubiKey, this is a YubiKey 5, is $50. It was more than I expected. I thought they were like $20, but don't buy a used YubiKey. I don't know, um, I don't know yeah, don't what do the problems might be, but um, <laughs> that's the thing is they, they're probably a neat and interesting ways that people might be selling not used YubiKeys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's also a thing, I, well, I didn't look this up, but I, th I think a YubiKey, if you're a big business or medium business, maybe or at least a business that's very security conscious, you can buy basically like the blank uh, UB keys. So you write the keys yourself. So no other company has the keys ever at your own, your own company. But uh, I think they still do that. I, I'm pretty sure they did it before, but uh, don't take my word for it. If you're and interested in that sort of thing. I don't know if people know, what is the process if you lose your UB key? Uh, you're fucked. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> depends on, you know, the, whatever you're uh, using. Um, you just unregister it in your account. The, yeah, UB, the way the YubiKey works is can, like, uh, there's the part on the YubiKey itself, which just essentially does like, kind of like public key cryptography. Uh, and then there's the part on the, the server that, you know, you've stored your password on the server and this other part of the YubiKey. And when you push on the button, the YubiKey just does a little calculation uh, that it has to know like the private part of the part that's stored on the server. 
and then it'll spit out a bunch of like gobbledygook and then send that to the server and the server can verify okay yes the thing that corresponds to this public part that i have is the private part so it's okay. kind of like uh pass keys where you have a, a private key and a public key and the public key is stored on the server and you have to sign something with your private key to authenticate to the server uh it's similar to that so you just well, deregister you, it on the server if you lose it. Well, the problem is like, how do you get onto the server if you if you lost your key to begin with, right? Uh, and one of the things uh, you can do social engineering is you can some websites allow you to to register multiple keys. So you have one your daily driver key, and then you would have and another like, one that like, you may like, keep in a safe or something. So like like sort of sort of almost like a three two one backup solution, right? Where you yes. where you have one of the you have the essentially you'd have the password, which would be the first thing. You'd have a Yubi key that's on site, and then maybe a Yubi key off site, like yeah. you that you leave in a drawer at your mom's house or some shit. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, you'd probably ones that you don't have physical access to, or, you know, immediate physical access to. You probably want to put in a safe somewhere, so maybe a safe at your mom's house. But well, but, but uh, otherwise, well, like, yeah. again, like how, like what are you a spy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, like, keep it safe. <laughs> so ultimately. Uh, whatever you're logging into like they determine whether you can authenticate so like you know if i uh like dave if you lost your password to port 87 i could let you in like i could just change your password on the server right but you would be authenticating uh, like if if something happened you, you you would not authenticate me via a discord message or anything like you know what i'm saying you would correct i would you would you would you'd, you'd either be like you need to call me from the phone you need to do a video yeah. call we need so, to do something so that i know this is actually fucking you but the other thing is yeah, you but so you, only, you customer, wouldn't do that but hold on you wouldn't do that for other people on port 87 because they're not your friend so you can't really authenticate uh, who the hell they are in the first place i would do that but i would require them to send me an email from the email that is listed as their recovery email and then include like a a picture of their driver's license basically yeah. to prove that they are really them. So that's the way Facebook does it. If you lose your Facebook, if you lose ac access to your Facebook account, you can recover your Facebook password by essentially sending them your driver's license. And if the picture on your driver's license or the, uh, the name on your driver's license matches the name on your Facebook account, then they'll let you reset your password through that email. That is your recovery email. Right. And for me, if I lost my personal Facebook account, that might be one of them good problems because I have so many burners <laughs> on Facebook that, that have uh, I have so many burners on Facebook and other other ways to access the um, public page for Echoplex Media, such as being like, hey, Matt, can you post this thing for me on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, this is I don't I mean, I'm not you know, if, if somebody would have told me um, that if you know someone because this is someone would have to be pretty sophisticated not just technically but um in a social engineering way to get a hold of your yubi key and then clone it well yeah i mean that's the yep. silly thing like if they get a hold of your yubi key they could just use it yeah what the fuck do they, they need don't to, have to clone what the fuck it. do they need a copy of it <laughs> and it's <laughs> like i mean you have to have like an oscilloscope or something like or a special oscilloscope to be able to get the information you need to clone it <laughs> using this method uh, so like it's not something you just like quickly you like have it for a couple seconds you know and get right. it back you actually have to take the key apart a bit to, to access the the chips and and do it and uh it's i mean yeah, but at that point why together, not yeah, like you're right but, at that point why not just fucking steal it yeah then you just steal it steal the key <laughs> but then still like is that's just the second the yubi key is like a second factor in addition to a password right correct mm -hmm. now i want one or actually okay. i want two <laughs> Yeah, good good idea. I might want more than that because I told you the multiple prices. The multiple prices are for different ways of connecting because they're not all just USB. Some are USB C. Some are uh, I don't know what is the the old uh, S uh, SD iPhone. Card? I don't know if they have an SD card one. They might, uh, but they also have and some of them are support. Uh, was it NFC? Yeah. Uh, so you don't even have to plug yeah, it and in. Yeah. Also, YubiKey is not the only vendor. There are other yeah. manufacturers of uh, like hardware-based two-factor authentication. Uh, YubiKey, I think, is just the most popular and the most supported across you know every everywhere that allows two-factor authentication. The other one that's real cool. They used to be, and I think they were running on like the old pager network, sort of. I'm not sure, but they were these little L LCD screens that were like maybe about this big. And they just rotate a rotate a password, and it would be yeah. Like that's your, TOTP. 
Uh, TOTP is uh, a time-based algorithm that basically is as long as I know a secret and you know a secret, we can both calculate what that TOP, TOTP code should be at this time. And usually you'll have a window of like a couple minutes where any code within that couple minutes will be taken. Uh, so like port 87 does TOTP codes uh, and I have it set up so that a code will work two minutes into the past and two minutes into the future. So you have a four minute window to enter a code uh, where, you know, if if that code, as you're typing it in, like flips over, it'll still work. They're supposed to be valid for like exactly 30 seconds, but everywhere puts in this window because like my clock on my phone might not be the same as the clock on the server that I'm trying to log into. Right. And it might just take you, who knows how long it takes you to type the thing in and like, well, you're yep. like oh crap, I got to look at, you know, yeah, yeah, there's all kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, we ended up kind of in the weeds on that, but that's good. Maybe we should do an entire uh, show about uh, security and um, maybe security and backup for an entire show sometime. I think that'd be a good idea. Good, so, yeah. I would like that. I love that topic. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for checking out How the Tech Are You? You can find this on every podcatcher and on YouTube. If you'd like to support this project, just go to echoplexmedia.com. Click the support link at the top of the website. I don't know. Click around there, too. I write one blog post a year. You should read my most recent one. You can check out uh, our other shows, my other shows, uh, twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia, and uh, have a great tech and week.